Pigeon uranium corp is on a pathway to developing Canada's largest near-surface high-grade uranium project at PLS. Pigeon represents an excellent opportunity to invest in a well-managed, very focused company with a world-class asset that has tremendous upside potential in an ever-improving nuclear energy sector. PLS is a, is a right project and this is a right time for development. Uh, in fact, some of the things I would draw your attention to, um, PLS is one of the world's largest and lowest cost uranium projects. Uh, in fact, in 2019, we completed a pre-feasibility study that outlined an underground mine scenario where we'll be able to uh, produce over 13 million pounds of, of U308 per year for the first five years. And at a very impressive low co operating cost of just over $7 a pound U308. The project is located in northern Canada in the province of Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan has consistently been ranked in the top 10 mining jurisdictions in the world. The project has excellent access uh, to major infrastructure such as highways. There is a clear path of, of development. Uh, now with the pre-feasibility study complete, our next step is to begin the, the environmental assessment uh, phase of work and uh, importantly, starting off with a feasibility study. Uh, we continue to ramp up the social environmental areas of the project as we move towards advanced permitting. The overall sector is looking much improved. Uh, in fact, 2020 and as we enter 2021, um, we're starting to get a lot more attention, more investment eyes on the sector. The price of, of the commodity is starting to move upwards. And I think this really has a lot to do with um, the focus on green, clean energy and, uh, and people's understanding that nuclear is an important part of that, uh, of that equation. Uh, fission is presently significantly undervalued on a per pound basis uh, versus our peers. So I think that that also represents another uh, area of uh, tremendous upside potential on the, on the stock of the prices we aim to equalize on a per pound basis with our other peers in the sector. Now the the price the the share price is, is sitting very close to our 52 week high. Uh, in fact, just four cents off of the 52 week high. We have about 30 million dollars in the treasury, so we were able to raise some significant capital uh, late last fall. Um, so we do have the capital to begin moving forward now with our with our next phase of work. Uh, we are covered by a number of, of analysts, uh, the best in, in the business. So with um, with uh, BMO Capital, 8 Capital, Wayne Wright, uh, and Canaccord uh, are following us right now. The uranium sector is strengthening, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there is a great deal of, um, of nuclear reactors that are being built. Um, in fact, under construction right now, we have over 50 reactors worldwide. So, you know, that when you look at the, the total number of reactors of 441, 53 represents about a 15% increase in number of reactors. And this is what's under construction right now. Plenty more planned as well as proposed. Uh, and that's because the demand is growing. As I mentioned, uh, you know, with the electri electrification of the world and the need for clean energy, uh, nuclear is certainly seen as uh, as the most important part of this of this new uh, this new push for clean green energy, and this is what's starting to move the the price of the commodity ever upwards. The project is located in uh, the northwest side of of the province of Saskatchewan. So here's a picture of the Athabasca Basin. We're in the southwest area. Um, currently, all of Canada's production comes from the eastern side of the basin uh, out of two mines, the MacArthur River, uh, which is currently on, on hold right now, waiting for stronger uranium prices before it goes back into production. Cigar Lake has had sort of a, I suppose in the last year, it's, it's been on again, off again production. And this is really COVID related more than anything else. So 
uh, about a month ago, uh, Cameco announced that, that they were closing Cigar Lake down again. So, um, but anyways, this is where all of Canada's production of, of uranium comes from. But I think what you're going to see is over the next phase of uh, development of, of mines in the area will come out of the southwest area, uh, of which our PLS project is is a very important player. And beside us, next gen, of course, are looking to develop the aero deposit. If you look at uh, PLS compared to other projects in the basin, this uh, this graph here will, you know, I think it lays it out pretty pretty clear. We're um, very shallow deposit, you know, so the earliest deposits that were discovered and developed in the Athabasca Basin were near, were near surface. And so with, with Triple R, we're seeing the type of deposit that hasn't been seen since the discovery of the, of the first uranium deposits in the area in the 1970s. So it's been a long time since uh, such a, an impressive, uh, large, high-grade and shallow deposit has been discovered. Uh, importantly, too, we're sitting in a in basement rock. So this is um, rock that's much easier to mine uh, from an engineering perspective, less problematic. So being near surface, and being in the right kind of rocks, I think, gives us a, a great advantage of, above the competition. This is a schematic drawing showing the uh, PLS trend. There are five main mineralized trends that do make up the deposit, the triple R deposit. Uh, only two of them are currently in the mine plan, that being zero zero and the uh, more substantial R780E zone. So where we've um, worked on the pre-feasibility study and, and developed a, um, a scenario for underground mining is in the, those two zones, the 007 and 780E. You can see the portal uh, access on land, going through the overburden, accessing the ore, which sits around 50 meters below the surface, and then we'll continue to, uh, to drift in and, and develop uh, as an underground scenario throughout the life of mine on the 780. I think the important growth story here, though, is, is pretty easily seen in, the, in these other three zones. Um, maybe the most substantial of the three satellite mineralized zones would be the R840 West Zone, which is not currently in the mine plan. It's in the overall resource, but it's not in the mine plan yet. So 2021, we're going to put in a strong effort to put the 840 into the mine plan. So we'll, we'll be doing some infill drilling this winter uh, and also into the summer of 2021, that if we're successful and by all accounts, we should be, if, if history is, is any indication um, of us being able to successfully convert those inferred resources into indicated, once into indicated, we can bring them into the mine plan. So um, we're looking at significant growth potential to build up the mine reserve and that work will, will start um, uh, later this, this this year. In fact, we'll probably have a winter program uh, starting in, in uh, probably February 2021. So some of the key things that we've seen in the pre-feasibility study, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a very low cost operator with around $7 um, per pound U308, very short construction time of three years, um, we're looking at an underground scenario, which gives us a very small environmental footprint. Uh, high IRR, looking at 25% uh, after tax and an impressive NPV uh, of around $700 million. And that's using an 8% uh, discount rate. But here's a, uh, a graph showing what work looks like over the next six years of the project. Um, in 2021, uh, probably starting by uh, Q2 of this year, late Q2, we'll begin our feasibility study. That should take about 18 months to complete. Um, the permitting and, and environmental social uh, efforts are ongoing from now until, um, until we receive uh, licenses basically to, to build and operate. So that's, you know, we're looking at around six years of continuous environmental uh, and permitting efforts. Going forward, um, we're looking at to at a drill program as I mentioned before, with a uh, uh, starting in this winter 2021. So 
that surface drilling will really be focused to build up the inferred resource to indicate it, which ultimately should uh, be able to increase the, the life of mine and by putting new resources into the mine reserves. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for having a look at fission uranium, and we look forward to discussing the project further. So thank you very much.